Faisal Sadiq, and this is how we rise in manufacturing and family businesses. COVID-19 has been profound on so many of us and it was no different for Interloop. All our plants were shut across our locations in Pakistan and Sri Lanka and across all our categories including hosiery, knitwear and denim. The health care challenge itself was huge and the impact on the business was sudden, it was severe and it was something we weren't really prepared for. That said, the team was 100% focused on making sure that we navigate through this crisis together. We had a central COVID-19 response team and a dedicated helpline for our employees. We made sure we had stringent health and safety measures in place, including social distancing, disinfecting our facilities, and all our workforce was brought safely into work. Those of our employees who were affected by COVID-19 were given medical leaves and complete assistance in the form of dedicated medical staff. We also made sure that we had the right policies and flexible working and remote working options including paid leaves where required. All our daycares were closed at all our manufacturing sites to support containment measures. At the same time, we were also conscious of the impact this pandemic was having on the communities, particularly the vulnerable. So we earmarked funds close to half a million dollars for our communities and donated in the form of food, healthcare equipment and PPE. While business continuity was key for us, we were also conscious not to make any short-term decisions which would impact the 23,000 people who are connected to Interloop. We put in place uh, budget suspensions on non-critical spend, but we had a priority not to retrench or let go any of our employees. We've been able to navigate this crisis with no retrenchment or no layoff. There was a point when we thought, is this the end of the road? But I'd be honest, I think having a um, diverse team, I think putting all those minds together on how we deal with this was what helped us most. We had uh, people with different experiences, our team who had already gone through this in China, so they had some experience on how to put those measures in place in Pakistan. We had a team in the US and the Netherlands who were giving us um, constant update about market news. So it was really um, building that cross-functional team and, and thinking that, you know what, if we do this together, we will come up on the other end. And I guess that's the true test of any leadership team is on how you navigate a crisis. And now, as a result, we have a committed and loyal um, employee base who can be mobilized quickly as we shift gears and move into growth mode. I also saw this crisis as an opportunity to transform the way we work. We were quick at mobilizing ourselves and adopting digital sampling across our supply chain. And I believe that is one of the most profound ways that the apparel industry is going to transform. Digital technology adoption in product development will leapfrog two to three years in my opinion. And as a result, the customer service and response time is going to improve, but at the same time, the need for physical samples and as a result, waste which goes into landfills is going to go down. At the same time, so will our costs, so driving more efficiencies throughout the supply chain. It will also give us the opportunity to collaborate with our customers and co-create and work more efficiently as a team. I believe sustainability is inherent to, uh, to a family-run business because of the desire to um, pass on their legacy to the next generation. The average tenure of a CEO at a family-run business is 20 years and um, uh, it was no different for Interloop. That allowed us to steer the um, organization um, in a direction which supported social and environmental development and at the same time make clear choices on long-term sustainability rather other than short-term gains um, on profitability. Succession planning is almost inherent to a family-run business. The desire to pass on one's legacy to the next generations. 
That said, we are building a performance-driven culture at Interloop and our HR team working with all the departments has a robust annual appraisal process in place. They've given us tools and processes to evaluate our talent on performance and potential. What that has uh, done is given us a um, succession pipeline for many critical positions. At Interloop, our mission is to be an agent of positive change and environmental and sustainable development have been key to our business strategy. We are also a signatory of the United Nations Women Empowerment Principles and have aligned ourselves with nine United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We are also conscious of our impact um, um, of the apparel industry on the environment. We um, are aggressively expanding our solar power capability and are set to double that in the next five years. We are also aligning ourselves with science-based reduction targets and hopefully we'll reduce more emissions as a result. And a lot of our machinery is equipped with nanobubble technology which reduces the use of water by 95%, which is particularly important for a water-scarce country like Pakistan. We've also gone a step further and partnered with the Better Cotton Initiative to support a coalition of 93,000 farmers through funds donation that allows women farmers to join those team, um, improve farming practices, provide healthcare vans to remote areas. So we have a dedicated strategy across the nine sustainable development goals for environment and social development. And what makes me really proud is that our sustainability philosophy really flows through our culture and through our people. Building a diverse and empowered workforce is a fundamental part of our strategy. Despite the cultural and the legal barriers in Pakistan, we've set out on a journey to recruit, train and retain more women in our organization and through our supply chain plus our communities. What has really worked for us, I'd say starting from the right tone at the top, leadership commitment is absolutely essential and we have a zero tolerance policy on harassment and violence at work. We've made sure that women are given the right development and career progression options. The last thing that I'd add that's worked really well is having women in leadership roles and serving as role models. Our board has 15% women at the company board level. Our executive committee has 30% women and we increased that from 10% to 30% over the last two years. That was done through dedicated target setting and ownership, and I believe that trickles through down to the organization. This pandemic has been uh, exhausting. It's been draining and challenging on so many fronts. I believe genuine heartfelt communication really inspires commitment and loyalty, but I think it does come a bit more naturally to women. So I'd say just keep on being genuine and authentic. I'd also say that keeping connected and staying engaged with your employees, whether that's through a quick phone call or weekly team huddles, and we had global team calls. It just kept everyone connected while we were apart. I'm conscious that um, my work has a greater impact, whether that's in terms of promoting gender parity at work, particularly in a country like Pakistan, supporting our communities through education, and serving as a role model for so many women out there. Keep on doing this great work and support these 23,000 people, and as a result, these many, many households that are connected with Interloop and become an agent of positive change and inspire many more people to become an agent of positive change. Not panicking and taking things in a stride.